All right, so let's get going. Um, I'd like to say welcome to everyone. Um, welcome to I'll Make Me a World, Creating Spaces for an Underrepresented Workforce. I'm Jerusha Graham, the Museum Coordinator for the Robert C. Williams Museum of Papermaking, located on the uh, campus of the Georgia Institute of Technology. Uh, tonight, we will be um, hearing from Steph Farrar and Bobby Ponti Pontius. Sorry mm -hmm. about that. No um, way. Uh, as the first event for Fast Film Fest. But before I introduce them, I'd just like to tell you guys a little bit about uh, Fast Film Fest. Fast Film Fest is sponsored by the Robert C. Williams Museum of Papermaking in partnership with Georgia Tech Library and ASIFA South. And it's a, a stop motion festival that's open to um, all ages and skill levels. We plan um, talks and workshops in January and February with a screening of um, juried um, submissions in the first week of March. And um, there's just a couple things that participants have to keep in mind. So it has to be original animated films, um, uh, five seconds to five minutes long, made with uh, paper being the primary material or uh, focus. It's free for participants. All of the programming in January and February, as well as the screening, is free. And um, the films get screened on March 4th and will be shared with the world. So our theme for 2022 is um, press start. And just to give you an example, this is a, a short video that um, was created by a student who had just learned how to um, do stop motion animation. And then just a, a quick peek at some of the other events that we have. So tonight we're starting off with I'll Make Me a World. Um, next week on Wednesday, I'll be doing a workshop on performance with 3D objects for uh, stop motion. And on Thursday, um, on Thursday, uh, Allison Volk will be uh, teaching some basics for iMovie. And then um, the following week, we'll have uh, Vinod Krishnan um, speaking about his uh, career in animation. And then we uh, have George from uh, the industry. So Cassandra Bruton Johnson um, with the CIFA South, Jalisa Leva, uh, who's the creator of uh, Jelly Bin and Pogo or for PBS Kids, and Jason, Jason Swartz, who's the uh, animation director at uh, Bento Box Atlanta. So let's get to the meat of tonight's. Uh, presentation. I'm going to introduce both uh, speakers and then um, uh, turn it over to uh, Steph. I do encourage participants to type in the uh, Q&A and we will um, pose those questions after uh, both speakers have presented. Steph Farrar is the Director of Vocational Initiatives for Exceptional Minds, a nonprofit focused on building a future where newer diverse perspectives advance an inclusive hiring culture in the entertainment industry. Farrar began her career in the film industry in Eastern Canada after winning a National Apprenticeship for Film and Television Award. She became a pioneer in the earliest years of animation in Nova Scotia, where she owned and operated a small boutique studio and was showcased in McLean's uh, magazine as one of Canada's top 100 young entrepreneurs. Steph recognizes that embracing um, the journey is the key to following dreams. With over 25 years of experience in the industry, she has enjoyed working in a variety of artistic, management, and instructor roles, 
uh, none more rewarding to her as working in education. Steph is passionate about animation and is dedicated to helping students find enjoyable and successful journeys of their own to pursue in this exciting field. So Bobby Pontius, the co-founder of Rise Up Animation, um, as well as development um, for Disney Channel and Disney Plus. He's a Filipino uh, American director and artist who has worked in the animation and games industry as an animator, character designer, art director, and director for such studios as Disney, Takeo Blue Sky, Arena Net, and more. He is an Academy Award nominated director for the animated short film One Small Step, and Bobby is currently developing animated projects for the Disney Channel and Disney Plus. So I will stop sharing my screen and turn it over to you, Steph. Well, thank you so much, Jerusha, and thanks for having me speak at this important event, and thank you for all who are attending. Um, as Jerusha said, my name is Steph Farrar. I am the Director of Vocational Initiatives at Exceptional Minds. Um, so my title is kind of a fancy way of saying that I work uh, primarily with our third year students and graduates to help them find their jobs in the industry. Um, I'll just get started here. Um, the presentation topic, topics I'm going to go over today are just like the, the burning questions on what Exceptional Minds is about, and especially towards the end, um, how we help create spaces for underrepresented groups in the animation and VFX industry. So I'm just going to start um, by telling you that uh, Exceptional Minds is a nonprofit organization committed to preparing young adults on the autism spectrum for careers in animation, visual effects, 3D gaming, and other related fields. And I'm just going to show this very quick video. Nobody ever asks a kid with autism, what is it you really like to do? At this school, we ask, what is your goal? What is your dream? We couldn't ask for a better team member. Everyone needs a little bit of help. And I have a studio full of artists. They're storytellers, they're dreamers. Does it take a little hand-holding? Yes. Does it take a commitment that we will not stop until this succeeds? Yes. But that's how we make movies. I used to work as a stock clerk who would just go through the aisles and uh, organize things. People are saying, you're autistic, you can't work here. It's like, no, this place shows me I can. Even though I have autism, you can still follow your dream no matter how hard life gets. And that's how I'm going to get through this. So that's a little clip on, on us that I like to show. Um, so what we do, uh, hold on one sec. All right, so um, what we do, we are primarily a three-year full-time post-secondary academy uh, teaching students the technical, artistic, and vocational skills they need for competitive and gainful employment in this industry. Um, we also offer part-time workshops all year round that expose students to a variety of programs and skills related to animation and visual effects. Um, we have two professional studios. We have a 2D animation studio and a VFX 3D animation and gaming studio. These are studios that are set up as part of our, it's like an extension of our academy. Uh, and they're professional studios that take on real work. And it's a place where our graduates can go um, apply for jobs there to get their first industry job. And it helps them get that first year or two of experience that they might need before applying for other jobs outside in the industry. So it's definitely a place where some of our graduates can get started. Um, and then lastly, we offer all kinds of postgraduate support and programming. So it never really ends at graduation. We, we still have lots of support that we offer our, our graduates after that. Um, so when does it happen? Just to cover all of the bases of, of Exceptional Minds, um, we are, for, and this is also in case there's anyone out there interested in our program, we are currently starting our full-time assessments for the 2022 academic year starting this September. And as I mentioned earlier, our part-time programs are offered all year round. So we have two fall sessions, 
do winter sessions, one spring session, and then we offer uh, extensive summer programming as well. And that's offered to uh, students mostly from 16 and up for those uh, part-time workshops. Um, a lot of, in a lot of cases, that's where our students in our full-time academy get started is by taking our part-time programming first. So next is where are we located? Well, I'm really excited to tell you that we are located in this beautiful new building, um, new to us building in Sherman Oaks. Uh, we just moved over the holidays. Uh, we're planning on expanding in the next five years. So this is a, a new space for us to move in. We're really excited. We're still kind of uh, getting set up in there, but it's a, it's a really cool location in Sherman Oaks. Um, why do we exist? So now we're getting to some more interesting things. Um, we exist because we understand that individuals on the autism spectrum are incredibly talented and creative artists and technicians who need to learn in a different environments, uh, different environments than others. We are also here because just like all underrepresented groups, we need to educate the industry and create awareness for these groups to help ensure that they have spaces to work in. Um, that said, it is not enough to just set aside spots for underrepresented individuals. We encourage employers to help uh, to set up our graduates for success by hiring them based on their skills and potential rather than just their underrepresented label. And that's really important to us. Um, so, sorry, one second, how we do it. I've got a couple of sets of slides to know what I'm saying here. Uh, so one of the things uh, we do, we have to, how we do it to help create spaces for underrepresented groups in this industry is we teach differently. So at our school, we have um, a very small and intimate class sizes. So it's five students to one instructor is the ratio at our school. Um, and this enables instructors to take the time to make sure that every student is learning in a way that works for them. Some students are more visuals than other, visual than others and some learn better uh, when they write things down or watch instructors do a task before they try their hand at it. So really not much different than anyone else. Um, some things that are different is that we allow students to work at their own pace. So while we make sure that they're able to learn what's expected of them by the time they graduate, we do allow some students to take any extra time they might need to develop their skills, or we might allow students to move through our program faster if they pick things up more quickly. The reason for this is um, sometimes our students might take longer than others to learn things. So instead of failing them at things, we ask them what they need to be able to help them catch up. So if it just means that they need a bit more time working on certain skills, then we just take that extra time with them to do that. This is something that a lot of other colleges don't do. Sorry, and it sets us uh, apart from others. Another thing that sets us apart is um, uh, the emphasis that we put on vocational studies every year to help prepare students for employment. So we work with them on things like uh, professional demeanor, professional dress, conflict resolution, self-management, problem solving. We help them build resumes and cover letters. We also help them uh, across all three years through mock interviews, which is kind of a fun uh, exercise that we do. Interviews are really scary and nerve wracking for anyone, but especially our population and our student base uh, has a hard time with anxiety issues. So we make sure that we have fun and put them through the ringers of, um, of mock interviews so that they know how to uh, talk about their strengths, talk about their challenges, uh, work through any tough interview questions that they might get. So we do this and we really work with them across all three years so that they're really prepared for, uh, for their first industry job. Um, we also work in their third year, they work a lot on their portfolios and their resumes to make sure that they have what they need for that first job. Um, additionally, we offer opportunities to get real industry experience with our animation and VFX studios in-house. And then finally, um, we offer employment education to the industry to help encourage and build diversity. So we teach them, them being the industry or industry partners, about how to work with our students and we offer um, best practices for interviewing and onboarding our students. Um, we also maintain strong relationships and partner with the industry to create interactive programs with students and graduates. So this um, 
picture on the screen, this foundations program is a program that I worked with with Netflix. Um, this was a huge mentorship program that was four and a half months. It's just finishing right now, actually. It started in August, uh, the end of August, and it's just finished now. This was an amazing foundations program, and I think it was their first one. It, they worked with uh, Exceptional Minds as well as Latinx uh, and animation, and they took 36 of our students and graduates and paired them up with uh, Latinx uh, participants and Netflix employees. So they were working in a variety of disciplines, so creative writing or a variety of art groups and some animation groups or design groups. And they were some of them worked one-on-one uh, -on -one with mentors and some other ones worked in mentorship groups. But it was an incredible experience for our students to be able to talk to industry people, um, so people that are outside the school and they can really ask questions about their own career path. And I think they worked on projects. I'm still learning about all the things that transpired in that incredible program. But this is one of the things that we do to plug into the industry and stay connected as much as possible. And uh, I'm looking forward to developing more uh, mentorship programs like this with other industry partners. Um, so uh, how to be supportive. Um, this is just a, a slide on what some supports look like. This is things that we talk to the industry about. I have a whole other presentation that I use to talk to the industry for employer education um, so they understand how to work with our students. But some of the things we go over with them um, are things like flexible work hours, uh, offering a variety of training methods, maybe offering different job tasks. So whatever their, our graduate can do, that they're offering them tasks based on things that they're really good at. Um, making people feel valued. Uh, we also uh, encourage them to give them options to work from home or a quieter space and or a space with different lighting. These are things that can be um, uh, difficult for some of our students and graduates. Um, allowing breaks and walks outside and then also offering a library or fact versus fiction resources in their HR department. This is another thing that's really important so that way Anyone working in a department or a company can review some of this HR library material to find out what it's like to work with a variety of underrepresented groups. So it's really important that HR departments have libraries um, that can inform people and educate people across the board. Um, also, being having or being a safe person to talk to is also really important. Um, and what this looks like is someone who is an ally, someone who is easy to approach, someone who's friendly and respectful to others, both at work and outside of work, and then someone who's also genuinely interested and invested in getting to know others. So that might be somebody who you are, which would be great, whoever you are. These are the kinds of things that we would call a safe person, and um, they're very much needed. Or maybe this is someone you need. Um, whether you are this person or you need this person, this is what we look for. Um, so I'm not sure how I am for time, but I will, maybe I'll show, I have a quick three minute video that just to show uh, some of our other work that are, is done in our studios to show the work that um, our graduates are doing in our studios and then I'll, and then I'll wrap up. Uh, so I'll just play this really quickly. The moment I heard about Exceptional Minds, it was like a switch flipped. And I was able to create. I was able to create and was encouraged to create. Now sit back, relax. Huh? Oh, what hey. is all this about?
that's my presentation. Uh, just to let you know that um, that video was done, uh, as I said, in our Exceptional Minds studios. So everything that you saw there was done by our graduates. So this is a place where they would go do some of that work to get that experience under their belt before they're ready for um, their first time industry jobs. So thank you very much for taking your time to listen to me and I'll pass it back over to Jerusha. Thank you. Um, it's exciting to get to see some of the behind the scenes, some of the movie magic <laughs> that you don't normally get to see. Um, I'm going to uh, have Bobby go ahead and queue up his screen. Yeah. And then, um, Hello. after you finish presenting, we'll uh, do questions. Awesome. Sounds good. Um, thank you. Uh, um, yeah, it's a bummer. I can't see your faces as if I uh, start uh, screen sharing. Uh, but uh, but Steph, uh, incredible. I mean, man, that's just so inspiring. And uh, you know, um, yeah, and you guys are doing like great work. So congratulations, and you know, what a what an honor to uh, be a part of this uh, panel with you. Uh, but hello, everyone. Uh, thanks. Uh, thanks for coming again. Like Steph said and Jerusha said, uh, my name is Bobby Pontius. Um, I am a co-founder of Rise Up Animation, um, and beyond this organization, I've been in the animation industry, uh, like Jerusha said earlier, for a bit, um, doing a little bit of everything. Um, I'm currently uh, developing a show at Disney now, um, and I, that's where I met um, the co-founder. I'll just kind of get into it. So Rise Up Animation um, is an organization that's pretty new. Um, it was formed when we were all in quarantine um, in the in like um, um, June 2020, actually, to be specific. We're all in quarantine. We're all kind of new to it. And then at the same time, what was happening was all that kind of like social injustice um, and all of that kind of stuff of uh, just kind of everything that was going down. And it's still going down. But, um, you know, that was making like headlines and news waves and all that kind of stuff back then. So. Um, just to start it off, what Rise Up Animation is, um, it's an organization that provides resources to uh, Black, Indigenous, pe people of color, uh, talent uh, um, in the animation industry, um, and also kind of aspiring to get into the animation industry. So we try to provide resources for you to connect with um, 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 animation artists in Hollywood, in LA, in New York, and wherever we are. So we, all, we know that it's not always easy to find animation professionals to talk to, but we had that, um, we found out that we had that uh, network and those resources and we wanted to, pro wanted to provide it to people that don't necessarily have those resources, especially people of color. So um, these are the founders, uh, Monica Ligo Cadiz, who Steph knows, uh, Frank Abney, um, me, myself, uh, Trent Corey, um, we all met a long time ago at Disney Feature Animation back in the day. I think it was like Record Ralph or something like that. Um, you know, and then eventually people kind of go their separate ways. Um, and, um, and uh, you know, Frank went off to DreamWorks and then Pixar. And then Monica started her own studio. And Trent um, stayed at Disney. <laughs> I went in a different direction as well. But, um, you know, in, in uh, June 2020, um, with the with all of the social like uh, unrest that was going on and, and all the you know kind of messed up things that were happening and all of the kind of like turmoil that were happening um like i remember kind of feeling in quarantine just kind of a little bit hopeless a lot of us were just kind of like okay you know let's do our due diligence of let's let's watch the things that we can watch let's educate ourselves let's donate where we can but um you know, uh, I, rem I remember Trent Corey um, texting me one day and going, there's got to be something that we can do for the, um, for our industry, our animation industry, the art industry, you know, um, and beyond all this kind of stuff, just because we kind of felt helpless. Um, and uh, we remember what it was like before the quarantine times where, I don't know if you guys, there's a lot of con animation conventions, comic book conventions, where essentially up and coming budding artists can kind of meet with professional artists and get their portfolio reviewed, looked at, get some feedback, get some thoughts and all that kind of stuff 
all that kind of stuff was gone at, in quarantine. Um, and, and everyone was at home. And so we were just kind of thinking, is there some way that we can kind of bridge that gap a little bit? Um, and we're all at home now. How can we provide value to people that are, everyone's kind of stuck at home, but how can we provide value specifically for um, people of color? Um, because this is like, a, a Hollywood is at a time where it's just kind of like, no offense to like anyone that's watching, but like it's, it's at a time where the, the, the majority of the stories are being told by like, you know, a specific um, type of per person, you know, uh, just kind of like, you know, your, um, you know, like an older generation, like uh, a white male, right? And nothing wrong with that. And, you know, they invented this industry. But I think it's it's been a little bit trickier for people of color and underrepresented voices, females, to break in because, you know, that wasn't necessarily, um, maybe they don't have the education means or they don't have the resources or they don't, it's just not there for them, right? Um, so, so having said this, um, we're like, well, what if we kind of, um, what if we kind of, in the absence of people seeing each other, what if we kind of pool our resources of everyone we know in the industry, of like every studio, because we worked at Disney, we, we know people in, in, at DreamWorks, Pixar, Disney, Sony, uh, who el whoever else, like every studio, big or small, out there. And um, um, what if we sort of begin to offer that again, like that that one-on-one -on -one meeting with, um, you know, BIPOC certainly, but, what, you know, someone from a, another corner of the world, whether they're in like Egypt, Africa, South America, and all that kind of stuff. And we offer them that, um, that experience of like, we can, we can, we can meet with you. For, if you're an animator, we can review your demo reel. If you're a vis dev artist, we can look at your portfolio. Story artist, we can look at your portfolio. If you want to get into production, we have production mentors that um, can, can talk to you and kind of like give that, close the gap a little bit between like Hollywood and LA and wherever you are in the world, because sometimes it could seem so far away. Um, so these are our, the, a, a few of our mentors, and they come from every studio, like Pixar, Disney, Dream, which like I say, um, and this is kind of in the quarantine uh, space. Um, this is, has replaced that kind of in-person portfolio review thing, like in the conventions and animation convention and comic conventions. It's just kind of one-on-one -on -one feedback sessions of like, you know, anyone can sign up. Um, they'll get assigned a mentor in that specific discipline that they signed up for. And we meet with them for like anywhere from like 30 minutes to an hour. Some, I've had sessions that's gone on for like three hours. And, um, you know, it's not, it's not like a class or mentorship per se, but it's just kind of meeting with somebody in the industry, in your discipline that you want to know more about, that you want to get feedback on your work um, for that, like, you know, uh, you know, half hour to you know, a couple hours, uh, time a day. And, and then after that, you can sign up again if you want to, you know, we encourage people to sign up again if they want to, to get a different mentor. And it's helpful to get like different opinions on, you know, their work and all that kind of stuff. So this is kind of like our bread and butter, these kind of like feedback sessions. Um, and then additionally, we do these, um, these like panels, these zoom panels, like we're doing now. Um, and then the aim to those panels, uh, the aim of those panels is just to kind of put that expertise and, and, and information out there for people that um, that don't necessarily have access to these kinds of professional artists, right? Um, and, you know, not, you know, we have panels that are kind of like talking about the discipline and the kind of like what it takes to get into this discipline, like effects animation, 2D animation, 3D animation, character design, story artist, but also a lot of it is just kind of like talking about representation, you know, and like storytelling and talking about um, kind of um, someone's journey um, from, you know, uh, Guadalajara, you know, how they came from Guadalajara and then made it out here in LA, what their journey was, you know, because a lot of, you know, students, or a lot of people kind of feel like, you know, they come from um, you know, other, you know, around the world and they don't feel like they can be a part of this industry because they don't feel like connected to it. But there's a lot of stories about people like working
from that corner of the world or coming to LA or coming to the States or going to Europe or anything like that. So just kind of sharing those stories because um, it, it, it kind of helps make it not feel so impossible. So we've had many of these uh, panels and they're all wonderful. Um, and they're all on our YouTube channel. So if you want to check this out on our YouTube uh, 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 link, all you have to do, I mean, you don't even have to memorize this. Like, I don't even know why I put this there, but all you have to go is YouTube, uh, Rise Up Animation. There's like hundreds of panels that we've done. And they go from everything to like visas, um, writing in animation, internships, um, you know, um, uh, uh, black American voices in animation, Latin American, uh, Latin, Latinx voices in animation, people coming from India, you know, all that kind of stuff. We, we try to kind of like put that information out there for free so you can kind of, you can attend a webinar or you can just watch it later on at your own uh, leisure. Um, so that's all kind of out there. Um, and then so our, our mentees have, um, have, you know, it's not because of us. Um, that we got them their jobs, but like once they come into a community, I feel like where they kind of feel like they're supported and, um, you know, there's all these resources at their disposal, um, and all these panels and all these feedback sessions that they're disposal. Eventually the, you know, if they have that drive, you know, like there are a lot of, um, mentees that kind of come through and just kind of like, yeah, okay, this, this, and this, okay, I get it now. I get it now. This is what I need to do. Eventually they kind of break into the industry, which is huge, huge for them. Um, and, um, so this is, we, we put out a call of just kind of like mentee, uh, like photos and all that kind of stuff. So this is on our main website. I uh, just kind of like, you know, it, it, it's like, um, it's kind of like people from around the world. Um, it's um, from all walks of life, young and old, professional, or just starting out uh, getting into art. Um, maybe don't know necessarily what they want to do yet, but um, you know, these are all like people from around the world that kind of signed up to meet with like um, industry professional artists that are working in the industry. You know, uh, just to have a real talk, man, real talk, one on one, um, of what they can do to improve, or what they can do to focus themselves on what career they want to do within animation. You know, or even if an artistic path is um, for them. I mean, like, there's a lot of people that just kind of decide production sounds more my jam. You know, or like editing or more uh, marketing. You know, all that kind of stuff. Um, so we have mentors from every studio. Uh, uh, kind of there to help them, uh, guide them, you know, um, uh, on that path. Um, so where do I sign up for a free feedback session? So right now, um, our main kind of social hub is on our uh, uh, Instagram. So we're at Rise Up Animation. Um, and you can, if you click on, click on that link tree, um, it'll bring you up to a, um, form where you can sign up for any discipline that you'd like. Um, and by any any discipline, I mean any discipline, like music, um, obviously kind of art stuff, production and all that kind of stuff. But, um, you know, and, and it, I mean, like in closing, it's like, um, it's, I mean, no one, <laughs> it's a nonprofit uh, and no one gets paid. It's, it's kind of a testament to the people in our industry that want to help, you know, like up and coming artists, especially underrepresented voices, uh, kind of like break into the industry. Um, and they want to kind of, uh, they, they kind of want to foster that, um, diverse and inclusive workspace. So like I say, um, it's out of the kindness of everyone's heart to just kind of meet with people to, um, to meet with people, um, to uh, just kind of guide them, point them in some sort of direction, um, in 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 a way that kind of feels like, um, you know, you could do it too. Um, because I I feel like I'll, especially if you're kind of um, halfway around the world, you know, we talked about it before, but um, you, you can kind of feel like impossible.
but people have done it. <laughs> people have done it. And if that is your dream, if, if your dream is to work in animation, um, whether it's abroad or, you know, in California or in the States, then, then you know, that's, it's a very, it's a very achievable possible goal. It's not going to be easy, but, um, but yeah, that's what we're kind of there for to just kind of provide in these kind of like uncertain, you know, kind of like, times of like we don't know what's gonna happen when people are going to see each other again all that kind of stuff um and uh yeah there's a lot of layers to it but um that's what we're there for so I think awesome that's it. Yeah, I'm dead, Jerusha. <laughs> <laughs> thank you uh, yeah no problem so we have a question in the q a q and a from sterling he asks um what is your favorite part of your job you go ahead, Seth, first. Oh, it's so hard to narrow down one favorite part. I literally love everything about my job. But I guess uh, the thing that really gets me excited is being able to um, find job placements for the grads. So, so when I've got industry calling me saying, hey, we're looking for someone with these qualifications. Who do you have? Then I have these spreadsheets with these graduates. I have a list of their interests, a list of their um, their software skills and, and things to help find whether they fit what they're looking for and then being able to put them in touch with the industry person and get, have them get a job out of it. So so those are huge wins. It's really what I'm, uh, m my main objective is to try to find all our grads jobs. So the journey, like even just the process of trying to find them jobs is already exciting enough. But when they do land a job, that's that's what I love most about my job, for sure. Yeah. Same thing for me, um, to Steph's point of just kind of like a meeting with somebody and um, uh, meeting with somebody and then just kind of like helping them kind of get to, um, you know, their goals. And, you know, you'll, you'll meet with somebody and then probably same for you, Steph, of like you meet somebody and like, you know, like six months from now, you find that they got this job or that job and you're like, oh my God, you know, and uh, you're so proud of them. <laughs> you know, it's almost like a, it's almost like a, you know, parental thing and like, wow, you know, you're, you're, you're so proud of them. And I think that, I think if I'm hearing right, like the thing that uh, Steph and I have in common the most is just kind of like helping um, uh, aspiring, uh, you know, um, like artists or like, you know, people that want to be in animation or the arts kind of like get there. Um, and then that's, that's very satisfying. It's a very satisfying feeling. Wouldn't you say Steph? Yeah, absolutely. I love getting to know each one as individuals because they all have slightly different dreams, different directions, <laughs> things they're good at, things they yeah. love that they might not be really great at, but just being able yeah. to help them find their way because there's yeah. so many opportunities yeah. out there. There's something for yeah. everyone out there. And yep. there's also so many related jobs and transferable skills. So if you're following animation, you know, I went to school for animation, three years for hand-drawn classical animation, but then I was able to get film industry jobs because I knew storyboarding, because I knew a production pipeline. So, you know, even though it was live action, I was on set with a green screen and things like that. It was just, there were so many transferable skills and relatable uh, departments and things mm -hmm. like that. So it's really neat. There's really anywhere you can go in this industry and there's so many opportunities. So helping them narrow it down or finding their direction is really, I just love that process. You know, that's a really good point, Steph, that you brought up too, because like, I feel like A, there's like uh, us, you know, that have been doing it for a while, are, we have like an obligation to kind of pay it forward, you know, and just kind of help people like bring them up. And then also, I kind of feel like right when you said that, I was like, you don't have to wait until you're um, in the industry to help people like bring them up like together you know what i mean like yeah. like right like it is like even now as students or if there's any students watching this i mean like help bring each other up you know what yeah. i mean like it's kind of like surround yourself with like like-minded ambitious like high achieving people and help bring each other up and doesn't have to start later when you're a veteran you can you can start doing that now and have that sort of mentality of just kind of like helping people you know like kind of like come up you know um 
I, I feel like, you know, and, and it's definitely in, 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 in Steph's wheelhouse, you know, and it's always kind of been an ambition of mine too. It's just kind of like, I'm not going to go up like on my own. Like I'd rather bring people up with me. You know what I mean? Um, so I'm starting to do that now, even as a student, I will say, I will say, I remember feeling that way. Yeah. So Lynn asked, um, what are the difficulties that you face in your job and how do you manage it and solve solve those difficulties? Go ahead, Sam. <laughs> I have to go first on this one too. <laughs> hmm. Difficulties. You have to, it's it's you you you're you're the first in all of them. <laughs> <laughs> well there's 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 always challenges, right? You know, especially when you have a, we have a three-year program, so we teach animation, but there's there's no way to possibly teach everything there is to know in animation. So um, some of the difficulties is just making sure um, that we can find those entry-level jobs. So I spend a lot of time talking to industry partners, you know, Nickelodeon, Cartoon Network, Dr Disney, DreamWorks, all of these different partners to have them come in and do presentations about what they're looking for in those entry-level jobs so that our students and grads have um, a few things that they can focus on or they, they can work on for those entry level skills. And sometimes when you work for, for the big, um, those big companies, those big, um, big name players, oftentimes you might want to get started in production or get started in a place where it isn't your dream job, but it's something you have to, you know, by getting a production job is that's the same as getting your foot in the door. And once your foot is in the door in a big company like that, then you're kind of first in line for those art jobs that come through. So it's so one thing that's challenging is um, talking to my students and grads about that as a fact. And and even though it might not be a key animation job necessarily, start in production and work your way up because it's so important. When you work in production, you get to work across multiple de uh, you know departments and really learn about the pipeline and really learn about the supervisors and get to know them and you sort of become part of the family and, and you're one of them. So when those creative art jobs come along, then you know, you'll be the first to get in there. So it's just trying to convince students of that uh, can be challenging sometimes. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> I experienced that so much that, yeah, I'm just kind of like, it's a, it's a really competitive field. So, and you don't want to make any bones about that. You don't want to kind of sugarcoat it or anything. You just kind of be like, yeah, it's really, really competitive. And, um, you know, there's, you know, uh, there's certain jobs, like for character designer, for instance. I mean, a lot of people want to be character designers. And rightfully so. I mean, who doesn't like drawing characters? But, you know, you're just kind of like, okay, well, depending on the person's skill level, you know, you're just kind of like, well, maybe while you're working on this aspect of your skill set, like it doesn't, it doesn't hurt to get in as a production, as a production position. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of studios like Nickelodeon that totally supportive of you making the transition. However, you want your career to um, kind of lean, you know what I mean? And they're down to listen to that, you know, which is wonderful. That's what I love about Nickelodeon. They're, they're yeah, like, right, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I would say, um, on like a, 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 a like a more specific thing, I think like a lot of uh, like portfolio reviews that I see or portfolios that I see that I'm reviewing is like, I, I always kind of ask, and like we say, like, Steph, you probably the same way, you see a lot of portfolios from people around the world, right, and a lot of different cultures. And you look at their portfolio and you're just kind of like, okay. Um, and it, they're, they're, um, they're a little bit hesitant to kind of tell their own story. You know, um, they're, they're more reticent to, they're, they're, they're more likely to kind of put stuff in the portfolio that has been done before. Like, you know, some, maybe something that looks like Frozen or something that looks like. Like there's a lot of fan art right and art, a lot of fan art and all the kind of stuff but like you know i mean steph and jerusha i'm always encouraging people of just kind of like because they're trying to find a way to stand out i always tell them you're from brazil what are those brazil folk, folk uh lore like what is your family like what are these kind of folk tales like what are these legends like why isn't this in your portfolio you need to get this in your portfolio to show who you are where you come from 
celebrate that um, and celebrate uh, the diversity of that. And a lot of times it's challenging because they've never seen that before. And or, I mean, they, they're not used to seeing it, you know, um, in portfolios or in movies and the, all that kind of stuff. And so the, the, the thing that we could do is just kind of encourage where you, wherever you are, your part of the world is just to tell those specific stories that are unique to your culture, unique to your family, you know, and, and, and represent, man. represent, even if it's, you know, it, it's your portfolio, but you should do that now. Get into the mindset of telling the stories now so you can be known as this kind of person that represents who you are, where you're from, and people know who you are. And when you get into the industry, you can potentially make a show or a movie or anything like that that's based off of that stuff that you're known for. And so, like, cultivate that kind of um, looking inward and uh, and just kind of recognizing that, you know, your stories are rad and your stories are meaningful and important and all that kind of stuff. Even if you haven't seen it out there yet, tell your stories, personal stories, cultural stories, familial stories, all that kind of stuff. So. That's, that's great advice because there's what what makes you stand out from everyone else is that you are the only you. So who is yeah. that? Show us mm -hmm. that. That's what people want to know. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's how you are going to stand out by that's being your personal, out. genuine self. Yeah. 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 100%. <laughs> And it'll mean more to you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it mean more to you. It'll be more. It'll mean more to when you show your mom. Like, hey, mom, look, you're a character in this, like, you know, like this, like portfolio bit or, you know, mock show that I made. It'll just you'll see it in the work, right, Steph? Like, if it means right. if it means something to someone, you'll see it in the work, right? You'll see the difference versus a technical exercise, maybe. Right, right, right. right. Yeah. How cool would it be to be hired because of your your being genuine? So when what? they hire you, they're actually hiring you for you and your quirks and your you know that you're not perfect. You don't look like the other ones, and you, yeah. you know that your work is your own and it's genuine and it's real. And so it's that much better when they hire you because you're you. Hundred <laughs> percent. That's it, man. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. So um, in in Steph's uh, bio, it mentioned that, that um, you did an apprenticeship. Bobby, how did you like, you know, rise up is is a, a, a kind of point of connection to help people um, uh, connect with the the industry. How how did that come about for you? Oh. Um... <laughs> Just cold emailing people because I uh, uh, I didn't have a lot of connections. I was up in Seattle and I wanted to be down in L.A. And I would just kind of cold email people on LinkedIn or blogs or anything like that. And it wasn't I didn't have any really big connection. I just kind of made connections through uh, emailing people. And then also I took this um, I took this online course called the Animation Mentor that like hooked me up with like a, a lot of um, industry professionals down here. So to, to that point, like taking classes, I mean, taking online classes might be a good idea for people to meet people outside of their um, city, um, which helped for me as well. Um, I was in Seattle, like I say, everyone's down here in LA, but like when I started to take classes, I started to meet people, you know, I started to meet people from, from here and there and you form this like online community. So it was kind of um, ground up uh, for me to make connections. It wasn't, um, yeah, it was just kind of like um, grassroots <laughs> like effort. I just kind of like, yeah, trying to meet people online, that kind of stuff. I just added you on LinkedIn right now, Bobby. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> what, do you, what do you think for you, Steph? Like what, for someone that had, that feels like they know nobody, to start to, you know, make these connections, like this, you know. When they know nobody, one thing that I would suggest is is trying to find a group that you fit into, like Rise Up, but mm -hmm. they're you know, like women in animation, which is for women and men, it's for anyone, um, uh -huh. but, but just different groups that are out there that are 
you know, those are those are easy places to go to, right? You're an easy place to go to. Women in Animation is an easy place to go to. All of these other groups that we mentioned, um, there is a place where you can go to at least start talking. And you can be, you know, we know artists very well. We are artists. We are shy and we're nervous and we're, you know, we're, we're scared to show our work and we're scared to be anyone. But these are the places you can go to feel safe. For sure. These these are people that are just like you who are ready to see past all that and say, hey, this is what you can do and to help get you started. But to, to first make those connections, I would suggest those um, those groups like ours, like all of ours. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And those, those kinds of groups like Rise Up Animation and women in animation, especially like um, the people that are there that are running it are industry professionals. So like what better way to kind of meet somebody, you know, in the industry, you know, I, I would have, when I was coming up, I would have killed for that opportunity, <laughs> you know what I mean? But the opportunity, like Steph said, the opportunity is there. Um, right. Get into those circles, you know? Um, yeah, that's a great point, Steph. Yeah, there, there, I mean, there's groups on Instagram, there's groups on Facebook, there's Storyboard Brawler is on Facebook that I, that I, you know, have joined just to see what people are, are doing. And there's, yeah. you know, there's something for anything that you're into. They're all out there. And I yeah. would say go to festivals, but with COVID, it's a little bit tougher. When I right. went to CNX a couple of years ago, that's how I learned about Exceptional Minds. Because I came here from Canada. I wanted to plug into LA thinking, oh, LA is too big for me. I'm not going to find <laughs> a place for me in LA. And, uh, and I, you know, I learned about Exceptional Minds uh, at that festival, and that's how I plugged in, because I kept bugging them until they gave me a job. So. <laughs> <laughs> nice. uh, a quick question, because both of you mentioned the like, um, festivals and conventions. Do you, um, obviously it's a different world now with COVID, but do you find um, that, or I, I guess I need to ask, because I've never been to one, was there, um, like uh, um, um, high monetary cost to participate in those? And did, did you find that um, that structure actually um, blocked a lot of people from connecting because of the, uh, the, the financial investment up front? I could see that. Um, when we are on the festival circuit uh, for one small step, um, you had to pay to you had to pay to enter your film, you know, to every um, festival. Some were massive, some were like five bucks, but like, um, you know, I'm assuming if someone is trying to enter their film, they're trying to get it as many places as they, as they can. So it's not gonna be just one film festival, it's gonna be like, hopefully like 50, you know, and that can, that can, uh, you know, that that's a lot of money. Uh, so yeah, I think so. I mean, but, um, um, dude, like I think, I think it's different now. Like, I kind of think the exclusivity of, um, it's just my opinion, like the exclusivity of like film festivals and all that kind of stuff, if you want to get your short steam. I mean, we we were kind of like, well, screw it. I mean, like we're kind of, we wanted to get out to as many people out there as, as we can out there. I think we did the festival circuit just so we can qualify for the Oscars. But beyond that, if your goal is to kind of get it to, is as a big audience as you want put it out there and uh it's just different now i mean like i um as far as exposure goes um i i feel like uh i would say i would say like do the film festival circuit run and you know that's a season what is that like six months or something like that and then like at the end of the run film festival run then just kind of put it out there, you know? Um, why not? I don't know. Um, to answer your question, I don't even know. It, it, like, with the question is like, does the financial burden like stifle a lot of filmmakers? Yeah, absolutely, because it's, uh, it's expensive. <laughs> I think, you know, what do you think, Steph? Yeah, it can be expensive, that festival circuit. Um... I mean, it's worth it, but there are other free places. Like I said, you know, Instagram, Facebook, um, there are podcasts, there are all, all kinds of different places and venues now. I, I'm not even plugged into all of them, um, but they're, they're out there. Pe your people are out there. Um, you yeah. just have to look for them. 
and I think I, somehow I think the younger generations, high school students, know more and more about all of the social media platforms. But just type in your interest in a social media platform, and you'll find you'll find your people. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, it is nine o'clock, so I'm gonna have to um, uh, do our farewells. Uh, just talking about those those resources. So CIFA South is our partner on um, Fast Film Fest, and there's lots of, of, of resources on their uh, website and uh, Facebook. Um, if you're just getting started with uh, Fast Film Fest, a lot of our participants, it's their, their first time um, trying their hands, at least at stop motion. And so there's a uh, on the uh, paper animation past, uh, paper animation film fest YouTube channel, there's uh, free resources, um, tutorials, and um, uh, clips for inspiration. Um, if you're thinking you want to uh, do a submission, submissions are are um, due February 18th, and we'll do the watch party on uh, March 4th. If you uh, liked this free programming and want to support the uh, Paper Museum, we're not opposed <laughs> to donations. Um, and then if you want to, uh, again, connect with Exceptional Minds or um, Rise Up Animation, um, uh, as you guys mentioned, there's YouTube and Instagram, and I had I found you guys through your uh, websites. So I posted those websites up um, here, uh, exceptional-minds.org, uh, riseupanimation.org. Um, and I just want to say thank you, uh, Steph and Bobby, for um, you generously giving your time and expertise to, to share with us. Um, this has been recorded, and so we will be posting this up on the um, Paper Museum website, paper.gatech.edu, and um, also on the, um, the Paper Animation YouTube channel. That's great. Thank you so much for, for having us, Jerusha. It was really great to be here. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so, um, I, I just want to let you guys know, um, comments in, in, a, in our um, Q&A, amazing. Thank you for this, for encouraging us to celebrate ourselves and reminding us how important it is to tell our own stories. Um, I remember watching One Small Step and loving it. Thank you both for your work and the opportunities you guys are providing. So. That's great. Thank you so much.